What up, what up, Ball Hawk here, man. Hey, I just realized doing this <laughs> podcast episode, I think I say Vanderbilt instead of Purdue. We play Purdue next, or did I say Purdue? I don't know. It was early this morning when I recorded this. Please forgive me if I say Vanderbilt in any part of this podcast, but I think I did say Vanderbilt instead of Purdue. So there you got it. All right, get to the show, Ball Hawk. Hey, look at you, all grown up and needing car insurance. You don't have to freak out if you got a driving record that's not so hot or worry if you aren't sure exactly what you need. Able Insurance has your back. Pass up the national insurance companies where you're just another number and keep your auto insurance right here in Charlottesville. 979-0814 is the number. Ableinsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? Say one more time. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, do? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Amon Hawkins. I appreciate you for tuning in to the show. And if you're new to the show, Definitely appreciate you for coming in, ready to serve. Shut the hell up, Juice, with the Juice Man himself. Um, appreciate all the support on social media, man. Everybody that's been sharing the podcast. Shout out to the Saber.com for always sharing the content. Uh, it's it's just truly amazing, man, that that folks you know love the content and uh, look forward to the content. So stayed up. Well, let me let me be honest with you guys. I didn't stay up all night and watch the game. I fell asleep. I get out and work out. I get up and work out like four o'clock in the morning. So by halftime, I was done. I tapped out. But I got up this morning, worked out, then came home and watched the second half of the game. I think the most difficult part was to not look at the final. I'm lying. I looked at the final as soon as I woke up this morning. I saw that we won, so the workout was easier. Then I came home, reviewed the game film, and here we are breaking down the Who's victory versus the Oregon Ducks. To advance to the Elite Eight to take on Vanderbilt. Um, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, man. Make sure you go to anchor.fm if you want to donate and support the uh, podcast financially. There are options available on anchor.fm. Just follow the instructions. Anything is always appreciable. And also go to sthujuice.com if you want to buy Shut the Hell Up Juice merchandise, aka shirts and hoodies. Uh, just let me know. And you can hit me up. The Ballhawk9 at gmail.com if you ever want to sponsor a couple episodes of the Ballhawk show. So let's jump right into it, man. UVA. Before the game, the talk was how are we uh adjust to the size and length of Oregon? Four guys that are 6'9. How are we going to deal with that length? And my my only reply on Twitter was make them move. When you're facing a team that has a lot of length and long arms and can contest a lot of shots, make them move in space. Come off screens, make them move laterally. Um, Don't allow them to anticipate what you're going to do. And I felt like the Wahoos did that for the most part. Now, it wasn't the best shooting game for us. And that's a testament to Oregon and what they did defensively. And you're you're in March Madness. Looks doesn't matter. All that matters is the final score. And in the end, the Wahoos have more points. But when you break down uh, the shooting percentage, it's something that you're not going to be proud of. For the game, we shot 35%, 35 35.7%. 20 total made field goals on 56 attempts. Uh, Oregon shot 37.8% from the field. 17 made field goals on 45 attempts. Um, It was a hard fart game. UVA basically played the starters. Every starter played at least 35 minutes. Jack Salt played two minutes. Braxton Key played six minutes. And Jay Huff played just one minute. So let's look at some. um, I thought I had the post game. Post game notes up. There we go. Get the post game notes up. We'll go through this. Um, Post game notes courtesy of VirginiaSports.com. Make sure you go to VirginiaSports.com for anything. Sports related for the University of Virginia. Shout out to my uh, bro, Jeff White. Um, 
Virginia won by a score of 53 to 49, if I haven't said that yet. Some team notes, Virginia will play Purdue in the NCAA South Regional Final on Saturday, March 30th at 8.49 p.m. on TBS. Virginia is now 32-3 and on the season and will make its first Elite Eight berth since the 2016 season and seventh overall. Virginia's 32 wins mark a new school record. That's 32 wins this season. For the Virginia Cavaliers. The Cavaliers are 5 and 1 all time at the KFC Yum Center. This is the home uh, gym of Louisville. Uh, UVA improved to 3 0 all time against Oregon. UVA is 15 to 12 against the Pac 12, including the 3 and 1 mark in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Virginia head coach Tony Bennett is 13 and 8 and 9 NCAA tournaments, including a 10 and 6 mark at UVA. UVA went on a 10-0 run near the end of the first half to gain a 30-22 lead after 20 minutes. UVA has won its last 61 games when leading at halftime. Let me say that one more time. UVA has won 61 straight games when it goes into the half with the lead. UVA attempted a season high 33 three-pointers this game. 33 of them things. UVA improved 11 and 0 when holding opponents to fewer than 50 points. They are 87 and 2 all time under Tony Bennett. Think about that. Let that marinate. NCAA tournament facing the best teams in the country. You hold somebody to under 50 points. We're talking about Division 1 high level basketball team. 50 points or less they did that uva matched a season low with five free throw attempts um, some ncaa tournament notes from uva uva is 32 and 22 all time in 23 ncaa tournament appearances uva is 73 all time in the ncaa sweet 16 uva is 15 and 6 as the number one seed in the ncaa tournament and the cavaliers are four and three all time versus number 12 seeds so some player notes double figure scores Ty Jerome scored 13 points Kihei Clark scored 12 DeAndre Hunter scored 11 points and Cal Guy scored 10 points Mamdi Diakite had a career high 11 rebounds and Clark matched career highs in points assists three pointers and minutes played shout out to the Mongoose Kihei Koba Kai Clark so we break down individual we talked about the minutes that are play right because the main narrative this season one of the main narratives this season is you know who's coach going to start what starting five is the best starting five you know you should never have this guy on the court with that guy it's all about rotations and who should be on the floor for coach tony bennett and that always comes into question and and i'm not saying that's a wrong thing because that's just exploring basketball you know, you try to look at your best combinations on the floor, who has the best plus minus, all these advanced analytics, and it's great basketball discussion. And when you look at this game and you reflect on this game, um, the best group was the starters because they played, not because they played the most, but when you look at the plus minus, and, the, you know, when you look at Mommy Diakite when he was on the floor, the plus minus it was plus nine points. For the, for the team Kihei Clark had a plus 10 uh, Cal Guy plus 1 Ty Jerome plus 4 DeAndre Hunter plus 7 And don't get me wrong um, It helped that They had a lot of time on the court uh, But Just giving you A little bit of advanced analytics uh, Jack Salt when he was on the court They were uh, minus 2 The team was Braxton Key was minus 6 For the 6 minutes he played And Jay Huff minus 3 for the minute and 35 seconds he played that's just some stats not you know trying to jump on anybody saying that's why they shouldn't have played but um maybe that's why bennett I, you know what that ain't really the reason why bennett kept the stars out there <laughs> i ain't even gonna lie to y'all bennett just got caught up in what any coach does the flow of the game if it's not broke don't fix it that's what it was you know um oregon they basically had a six-man rotation um, Francis Okoru, their starter, played 11 minutes, and they basically had Will Richardson and he, I mean, 
um, played 23 and 19 minutes respectively. And Coach Des, he 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 basically, like I said, got into the flow to the matchups and was the second half to where I don't I don't think I think Jack Salt came in for like a minute and then Kihei came right back in. Uh, but I know that's going to be the topic of discussion going to this Purdue game. Will we see more Jay Huff? How would Braxton Key factor in? And it just all depends on the floor of the game. And that's why I always say when it comes to, to stats and hindsight, I call them hindsight is 2020 analytics. That's what advanced analytics are. It's hindsight is 2020. It's after the fact stats that you check that you can't review during the game. And as a coach and as somebody sitting on the bench, you're not privy to these high side of 2020 stats. So all you can do is go off your coaching experience, go off the feel for your players, the feel of the game, and what you're seeing from that baseline. You know, and that's sometimes how when I get into a little discussions with, with people who love stats, that's always my thought process is like they're not privy to that. And I know I throw shots and I call people armchair coaches and armchair All-Americans. But it, it's, it's tongue-in-cheek. But then again, it's really like I'm serving you shut the hell up just because it's like, yo, you questioning the coach. But in a sense, they're not privy to these stats that we are harping on and using this gospel after the fact because they can't see it in real time. And we saw that with, with Coach this game. I mean, a guy like Kihei Clark played 36 minutes and 40 seconds. Nobody saw that coming. And this is a game you really can't complain because the young man did everything and anything that we asked him to do. They dared him to shoot, he shot the ball. They dared him to make plays with the basketball, he made plays with the basketball. Inside, outside, he defended. He gave you scramble rebounds on the offensive side of the ball. Um, he kept his guy in front of him. Pritchard was is very dynamic. Um, Pritchard was just three or 12 from the field. Can he elevate and shoot over Kihei Clark? Absolutely, absolutely. But sometimes, even though somebody can elevate and shoot over you, is that within their offensive scheme? Is that is that what they've been working for? Are they just telling you leading up to the game, hey, you, if Kihei Clark is checking you, just rise up and shoot over him. Is that your offensive game plan? If that's somebody's offensive game plan, you live and die with it. And I think that's what Kihei brings to the table is that you see he's diminutive. Do you go away from what you want to do schematically just to try to exploit a matchup and how often are you going to win that matchup i mean for somebody to go three or twelve one or six from three versus a dude like peyton pritchett who chris weber you would have thought he was the next coming of kyrie irvin kihei got, got the victory and and that's not i like that kihei didn't get switched up on six nine guys and we allowed them to see if they would exploit him in the paint and we would just double and stay within ourselves defensively and that's what i love about that as well is like the narrative was what was what are we going to do with this size with this size are we going to be able to play key hey we may need to put a braxton key we may need to put in jay huff we need to match their size and all season i kept hearing people say you know we need coach bennett has to f impose his lineup onto somebody else and i felt like coach did that this game he made he stayed with what he felt comfortable with. He just said, "Hey, Cal guy is a good defender. Is he is he diminutive compared to that lineup? Absolutely. But I believe in my scheme. I believe in my pack line. And yes, you may be taller than me, but I'm gonna make your six foot nine guys shooters. I'm gonna see how many Carmelo Anthony's you have on your team. How many dudes above six eight that can shoot, flat out shoot, catch and shoot." Pull up game shoot because Mamdi Diakite is the same height as your big man and he's outperforming all of them. That's not let that go unnoticed. Mamdi Diakite, the fact that he was tenacious on the boards offensively and defensively, really demoralized Oregon. Mamdi Diakite had eight defensive rebounds, three offensive rebounds. He was a shot blocking short in there. That dude was punching shot when he punched that shot on the glass and brung it down for a rebound the fact that he knew that we had our own kenny wooten we had our version of a kenny wooten because mom needs look let me tell y'all something mom need to keep they say hey hey ball hawk i'm going to i'm going to show them they said they're going to be physical i got something physical for them 
They like my hair. They think they think because I dyed my hair, I mean, I'm gonna be tenacious like a Dennis Rodman, but without the antics. And and if you wanna and if you want to take the basketball after the whistle, I'm gonna get forehead to forehead and say you're gonna sip this juice, courtesy of the ball hawk. Shut the hell up, juice for you. Every time he got a rebound, shut the hell up, juice for you. Every time he got a block, shut the hell up, juice for you. And he got to shut the hell up, juice dump. Shout out to Mom the Dear Kite, man. Shout out to Kihei Carr. These are two dudes that were X Factors. We know the big three. Ty Jerome, DeAndre Hunter, Cal Guy. We all know. Flat out can score, do what you want to do on the offensive side. But it's always that, eh, we need the Akite. Eh, if Kihei Carr, those are always the two X Factors. And the two X Factors stepped up to the plate. The two X Factors get the damn game ball. They ain't taking nothing away from Thailand because he made two from Thailand in the second half. BB, Ty Jerome, and you want to pressure me, Pritchard? You want to pressure me? Let me show you what I learned at CP3's ball handling camp. And then let me go ahead and hit you with the icky at the free throw line. Pull up, splash. Then Cal got just when you think. His shot is broken. He hit two of them things in the second half. Oh, you wanna, oh, you wanna help him recover and leave him in the corner in the second half in front of our bench? Take this with you. Splash. Then he hit you with the no look. To, 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 hold on, man. They left DeAndre Hunter wide bucket naked open in the closing minutes of the second half. That's disrespectful. Sidebar, sidebar. Can we talk about Chris Webber? Can we talk about Chris Webber and his over analytical ass? Chris Webber, man, you do an awesome job at, 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 at color commentating, bro. You do. You know your stuff. You prove you know your stuff, Chris. But God damn, you got to stop being the smartest guy in the room every time you talk, bro. Everything don't have to be a damn monologue. I swear for goodness you got the longest fill-in balls I ever seen in my life. Every time the play-by-play -play dude pause and, and open the door for you to provide your your analytics and, and, and your feedback and your breakdowns. One time the teleprompter people had to damn basically cut your mic off and tell you, man, can you transition to how Cal guy got this open three in the corner? And can you stop talking about Pritchett and I mean and um from Oregon? Good lord. He mean well. He does well. I'm not saying he should be fired. I ain't saying Chris Webber suck. I just said, good God. Calm down. Sit down. Hold on. Talking about everybody had Oregon as the underdog. Where? Everybody that I know was giving Oregon much respect, especially in our fan base. They was like, yo, we playing some day on hyenas, some avatars. It's like Florida State. What are we going to do? I mean, I had to mute my damn TV. Matter of fact, I just went to the regular game. I didn't even want to watch the TV copy no more because he was talking too much. Oh, my God. I wanted, to, I wanted to tweet. Shut the hell up, please, for a little while. Just a little while. We poco. A little bit. But other than that, Chris Webber, man, like what you do, man. Like what you do on NBA TV, the players only uh, broadcast. Love what you do, man. Wish I was sitting in the chair where you at. But I know what not to do. I ain't gonna talk as much as your ass be doing, breaking down everything, like you, like you a damn Yale graduate or something, like you a, a, a master's in talking. Let me stop. I'm doing what Chris Webber doing. All right, back to the guys. Back to the guys. Oh, shout out to um at baseline to pack line who has the the the, the nickname for Key Hay that that I really enjoyed when I saw this one on Twitter. He calls him Three Hay Clark. <laughs> Yo, that's yo, that's a dope nickname, man. Three hay, three hay. I call layups tray ups for people who can shoot, like a Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, people at Thompson Park, BCBA, uh, Street Bowl League, like a Clyde Thompson. When when guys shoot threes and it's like a layup, I call them tray ups. And for him to call Key Hay three hay, that was dope, man. Cause he hit some big threes bro i'm talking about solid dagger threes when they hit that three in the second half to take a three-point lead and who comes curling off the screen on the elbow key hay clock with somebody trailing him and usually key hay will pump fake and dribble to the top of the free throw line and expect the next curl off you know the elbow stop and pop to get it no he took the three and that mug was wet too Watch. i'm talking about pure Three Hay Clark. Salute to my guy at baseline to pack line. That's his Twitter name. I ain't like ESPN. I ain't gonna take your damn nickname like it's my own, like they did with, with Jay Huff. 
the hoonicorn they you would have thought they made up the damn nickname and and they made and 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 one of our fans made it up on twitter that's what that's what them big conglomerates do man they take your nicknames and steal it you know somebody say shut the hell up juice live on tv man i'm a, i'm gonna I'm be happy i am gonna be happy and mad at the same time but then i'll be like shout out to the ball hawk god dang it but um Overall, man, I thought the Wahoos play play um, play good enough to win. It's not a it's not a victory that you're gonna hang your hat on and say this is the way we need to play basketball. Defensively, yes, this is the way we need to play basketball. We didn't shoot well from the field at all. Cal got still um, shooting the next open shot. It, it's not been as efficient as we're used to seeing him. Here's a guy that, if I'm not mistaken, set the record. In ACC for field goal percentage Somebody said that yesterday And I ain't even looked that up So if that's the truth Then we're going to ride with that But he was just 415 from the field 211 from three One of those threes were a desperation in, in the shot clock to where he was about to have So I give him two for ten Just like Kihei was three for eight And one of them he had to shoot Because he got the ball with like one second in the shot clock So I give him really three for seven Or four for eight from the field Um Ty Jerome was 5 of 12 from the field, 3 for 8 from 3. I told you he hit three of them things from Thailand. When these dudes going to start realizing that Ty Jerome is straight, a straight sharpshooter, bro? And he could dance. Ty, Ty Jerome could boogie with the ball. Y'all keep switching these damn bigs on Ty Jerome just because he's a white boy that he can't cross your ass up and splash you. That's Y'all going to stop disrespecting my boy for New Rochelle. Y'all going to stop looking at race. I know that's what it is. Oh, little white boy can't do that. Okay. Dance on you. CP3 camp MVP right there. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I went there. I know. I, I say I say what people don't want to say. That's what it is. Ty Jerome wasn't a a in what they call in the streets a white boy. Then people get put some more respect on his name. But that's just what it is. I just call it what it is, man. I know a lot of people you you really fans ain't used to hearing me be uncut like that. That's usually like my NFL NBA talk. But that's what it is. Every time I see folks and I bring up Ty Jerome, they face get all tight like they drunk some bad beer. And I be looking at them like, oh, you don't think so? All right, hand down then. I bet you'd be man down. Salute to New Rochelle's on Ty Jerome, man. You better call Ty Jerome. You better call him and put some respect on his damn name. He every bit of a top 25 prospect like a damn Trey Jones at Duke. I tell you what, you would never see a team disrespect a Ty Jerome like they did Trey Jones ass. Had Taco Fall checking Trey Jones. I wish I wish a team would have they sent a checking Ty Jerome and sagging in the paint. Jerome would smash them. But they, everybody raving by some damn Trey Jones and, and the draft and all these damn scouts and stuff got him ahead of Ty Jerome. Where? How? Who? Can you see? Do you see what I see? Are you serious? Come on, man. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all folks be killing me. If somebody top, top, at first round, grade eight, like, come on, son. They had Taco Fall. Checking Trey Jones from the paint, daring him to shoot. That, I mean, they treat. Look, for all the flack that three hey Key Hay Clark be getting about teams could just sag off him. I need that same energy for Trey Jones. I need you Duke fans who be trolling UVA fans realize when y'all be laughing at Key Hay, you got your own damn Key Hay problem in a sense. And when of where a hey, team's gonna let Trey Jones shoot it, shoot it, shoot the J. Now we know you're gonna dare Zion to shoot because he gonna. Punch on your your hind pots or pun your head tops. I got sidetracked there again, didn't I? I apologize, y'all. Let me get back to it. You know what, man? We won. That's all that matters. Ain't no more analytics. We won. We playing Vanderbilt next. Yes, I'm French and I'm saying we. We won. All right. I ain't even gonna front of y'all. I done talked enough this podcast. I'm doing the Chris Webber. That's enough. We won. We getting ready for Vanderbilt. What's next on the agenda to worry about? That they can shoot. They one of the best shooting teams in the country. It's a matchup problem for one of their shooters. I don't know his name because I ain't had a chance to look at the notes yet. But I'm already seeing the concern. Wahoo fans, what I tell y'all the last podcast. We are who we thought we were. They need to worry about our pack line. What we're going to do is respect what Vanderbilt does very well. We're going to take heed to it, but we're not going to panic and we're not going to act like we can't come up with some type of defensive scheme to implement on the floor to better help our chances to win. What we're not going to do is be out here panicking like we was for the Oregon game. Talk about day 6-9, we need to do this, we need to do that. No. 
we are who we thought we were. One of the best in the country. Let's start acting like it. We're going to respect our opponent. We're going to be humble. But we ain't going to get so much damn respect to it. We start panicking and start second guessing what we do. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do. Never let anybody tell you you can't do what you set your mind out to do. Go Hoos. We're on to the Elite Eight. Salute to everybody that's been subscribing to the show. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Go get your Shut the Hell Up Juice gear. SCHUjuice.com. I'm done. My Chris Weber. uh impersonation is done that's damn near 25 minutes of talking ball hawk Ha-ha! we out i want the whole world spin my record share road the hoodie styles check game stay free records ho shorty girl fed the death in a massage bad news even be massaging i got a city happy I be massaging Pinky rings on my finger, I'm massaging I got a speedboat concert cause I massage I coming through about a whole kind of large I be massaging, I be massaged I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging Yeah, I post some constantly massaging I got GPS's, I be massaging I catch croaker fish cause I massaging I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging Straight out the ghetto Cause I'm massaging I got ice around my neck Cause I'm massaging Or even gold teeth I'm massaging A pinky ring iced out Cause I'm massaging I got a hundred million dollars I be massaging I got ten dollars I be massaging I got a thousand dollars I be massaging I got twenty two cents And be massaging I take a penny And be massaging I tell a shorty girl fat I be massaging Your big two I be massaging I be massaging I be massaging I got a GP Stern with massaging Whole shit road chain be massaging I got a Uzi I be massaging I got a 12 gauge pump I massage I got a hundred thousand I massage I Ain't broke I be massaging I stay paid I be massaging I stay late I be massaging I hit the poop all night cause I'm massaging She wanna come through loaded and massage Whole team we massage Bad new parts constantly massage Ain't no joke, I be massaging Even the bacon and eggs, I be massaging Huh? Polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging I love you, sweetie cake Spin my record, let me give you the game Oh, how to get rich Take a penny And flip a penny The 40 billion Huh? Why? I be massaging What? Car stern wheel I be massaging the whole, the whole label of the state free records in the VA. Oh, we be massaging. Let's have a money shot. I want the whole world spin my record. Shay Road, the hoodie styles, check game, stay free records. Ho! Shorty girl, fed the death in a massaging. Bad news, even be massaging. I got a fitted hip, I be massaging. Pinky rings on my finger, I massaging. I got a speedboat concert, cause I massage. I coming through about a whole kind of large. I be massaging. I be massaged I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging Yeah, I post some constantly massaging I got GPS's, I be massaging I catch croaker fish cause I'm massaging I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging Straight out the ghetto, cause I'm massaging I got ice around my neck cause I'm massaging Or even gold teeth, I massaging Or pinky ring iced out cause I'm massaging I got a hundred million dollars, I be massaging I got ten I be massaging. I got a thousand dollars. I be massaging. I got twenty two cent and be massaging. I take a penny and be massaging. I tell shorty girl fat. I be massaging. Your big two. I be massaging. I be massaging. I be massaging. I got a GPS stern with massaging. Whole shit road chain be massaging. I got a Uzi. I be massaging. I got a twelve gauge pump. I massage. I got a hundred thousand. I massage. I ain't broke, I be massaging. I stay paid, I be massaging. I stay late, I be massaging. I hit the poop all night cause I'm massaging. She wanna come through loaded and massage. Whole cheese, 
we massage Bad new posse constantly massage Ain't no joke, I be massaging Even the bacon and eggs, I be massaging Huh? Polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging I love you, sweetie cake Spin my record, let me give you the game Oh, how to get rich Take a penny And flip a penny Then 40 billion Uh-huh, why? I be massaging What? Car stern wheel I be massaging The whole, the whole label Of the state free records In the VA oh, We be massaging Let's have a money shot